Hello everyone, welcome to From the Star Wars Library, where Star Wars is in print, the Force is with the readers, and at this point, we're dealing with the old comic smell quite a bit. I'm your host, Nathan P. Butler of Star Wars Beyond the Films, Republic Forces Radio Network, the Star Wars Timeline Gold, StarWarsFanWars.com, etc., etc. This time, we're taking a look at just one issue from the Marvel Star Wars series. Why just one? Because I'm trying to cover this in terms of story arcs, and this was an odd one. It looks like a time period where they had some issues production-wise and needed some fill-in. Because this is Star Wars number 16. And number 16 here, it's actually a pretty good story. It's called The Hunter, and it introduces Valence, which is a pretty cool character. But it's got art by Walt Simonson and Bob Wycheck, or Wycheck, however you say his name. But it's still written by Archie Goodwin, who wrote the previous issues. And you may recall that Carmine Infantino wound up being the new artist. It was the beginning of that pairing that we see a lot in the Marvel series in our previous coverage of the Marvel saga. But that's not the case here. I have to wonder if this is something where he just was not available, they were bouncing between artists, or what exactly it was that was going on. Even still, though, even if we start thinking just in terms of story arcs, while it is sort of a standalone, it sets up things later, I think it was meant to set up the next issue, but that next issue didn't wind up being the issue that was expected. It says at the end of this story, down here in the original, down at the bottom, next issue, The Empire Strikes. Well, we have the story, The Empire Strikes. But this is 16. This is 18. They skipped an issue and had an odd flashback story with Luke that we'll cover in our next episode called The Crucible. So, it seems as though things were kind of on a weird production ground for Marvel at this point. That being said, that gives us what is otherwise a unique issue as well. Number 16, The Hunter. Why is it also unique? This story does not feature Luke, Han, Leia, Chewbacca, C-3PO, R2-D2. It features none of our major characters except in a brief flashback type sequence. It ties into them but it does not focus on them at all. So what's the deal with this odd story that doesn't feature any of our major characters? Well, it is still, of course, set in the Star Wars universe. Starting back in around issue number 11, we got the opening now. As any fan of longtime Marvel comics will remember, most of the Marvel comics had a little description up at the top. We now have long ago, not a long time ago, but long ago in a galaxy far, far away. There exists... Wait... Shouldn't be existed. There exists a state of cosmic civil war. A brave alliance of underground freedom fighters has challenged the tyranny and oppression of the awesome Galactic Empire. This is their story. Stanley presents Star Wars, the greatest space fantasy of all. Continuing the saga begun in the film by George Lucas, released by 20th Century Fox. This begins with a bounty hunter named Bylert Valence. And Valence and his crew, you may remember this from the Star Wars Marvel's audio drama series produced by Andrew Gilbertson. You ought to check it out, StarWarsFanWars.com. Good stuff, not just because I'm in it. Valence is this bounty hunter who leads his team against Talos IV's medical station. And he's not doing it because he's been hired to do it. He essentially is the one paying for his own job here for his crew. Because at one point, he was a stormtrooper. And he was injured. He wound up getting heavily damaged, his body was heavily damaged, by a rebel bombing run. And because of this, this man, who absolutely hates droids, I mean, the Yuzhan Vong would have loved this guy. This guy, who absolutely hates droids, became himself a cyborg. That's right, it's an issue of someone who had a prejudice, found out that now he is the object of his prejudice, and in his self-hatred is now taking it out on pretty much everyone else. He goes to Telos 4, wipes out that medical station so that he can wipe out any trace of the records of his past so people won't know who he really is underneath all the false skin. Thing about it though, also there recovering from his injuries, temporarily because he winds up being killed, is Don Juan Quixote. Yeah, the same Jedi Knight or failed Jedi Knight or whatever the heck he's supposed to be that we saw back in that first original Marvel arc back on Aduba 3. He's babbling on and on about the different individuals that he was on Aduba 3 with. And in doing so, he alerts Valence and his team to Han Solo, 
the fact that Han Solo has his uh, uh, bounty on his head is something that Valence would like to see, but it also gets Valence thinking about something else. See, there's these stories now. He got his hands on some Imperial footage of Luke Skywalker, the young man, he doesn't quite have the name, but the young man who blew up the Death Star, the young man who was with Han Solo, who had these two droid companions, R2-D2 and C-3PO, which causes him to be enraged. How dare a sentient human being have good buddy-buddy relationships with two little tin cans? He calls them junk, or robots. The term droids doesn't tend to be used all that much. Uh... It enrages him, so aside from the fact that he can go after Han Solo to get a bounty, he also wants to wipe out this kid and his droids. And he happens to have heard now that while on Aduba 3, a member of Han's little crew, the one, the, the eight for Aduba 3, right? One of his crew was a young farm boy who happened to have a droid friend. Turns out, this is FE9Q, I believe was the droid's name, and Jim the Starkiller Kid. This is not Luke. But he doesn't know that. So in order to track them down, he tracks down the most recognizable of the bunch, Jackson. Turns out that Jackson and Amaza Foxtrain are still working together, at least briefly, because Jackson is getting his ship repaired with some of the money that he made. So now, now that the ship is repaired, they're intending on going their separate ways, except Valence shows up, kidnaps Jackson, and tries to use him to get information about where to find Han Solo so he can find the kid with the droids. Only to wind up, Amaza saves him, only to babble about Aduba 3. In doing so, that gives Valence the information that he needs. They all race to get to Aduba 3, wind up catching up with Jim the Starkiller Kid, who is now about to be married to Mary, the girl that was back in that particular older story arc. And we see this knockdown, drag out fight between Valence and his men versus Jackson and Amaza in the rabbit's foot, this ship that he's got. Uh, and of course, Jim and others on the ground. Only for Valence to realize that it's the wrong kid, at which point he takes off. He's been soundly defeated, and he gets the heck out of there. But what we've got here is a story that sets up Valence as a character, who's a really interesting character for a villain, a self-hating villain in a sense here. Really cool character who's going to come back in the series. And it brings back Jim, Don Juan Quixote, uh, Mary, and Amaza, and uh, what's it, Jackson? Yeah, I, I try to block him out of my mind. Uh, Jackson? It's also around the time of the uh, anniversary of the holiday special that I'm recording this, so I'm trying to put that out of my mind, too. Lots of stuff to kind of push out from back in 78. Uh, in any event, it brings back these characters, so it shows a sense that Marvel really was focusing on its own continuity. Now, granted, the novels aren't really fitting into this mix just yet, nor are the newspaper, newspaper strips excuse me, that are going to be coming up soon, but... It is there. Marvel has its own concept of Star Wars continuity. It's going to keep things connected in its own comics. And that is a nice thing about the Marvel Comics run. Where can you find this issue? Obviously, you can find it there in the pages of the original Marvel series. You can also find it within the classic Star Wars a long time ago trade paperback series. But most recently, as with many of our previous ones, in fact, all the Marvel ones we've covered so far, you can find it in Star Wars Omnibus A Long Time Ago, Volume 1, as a very cost-effective means of finding this relatively old issue of the Marvel series. So, Star Wars Marvel series number 16, The Hunter. Is it essential? Can it be skipped? Well, if you're reading the Marvel stuff, I think it actually is kind of essential, because you need to know Valence's background in order to understand where Valence is coming from when we see him again. In that sense, can it be skipped? Again, if you're reading the Marvel stuff, no. This is an essential part of the early chunk of the Marvel Star Wars story. And it's actually a pretty good one. For something without the big three in it, this is a heck of a story and a heck of a new character that they have introduced. It's one of my old favorites from at least this era of the Marvel series. With that, we'll say thank you for watching, as always, and may the Force be with the readers.